Islands, the court notes that the parties have established offshore oil concession blocks employing different lines since, 19, since the 1970s. However, the parties have referred only to limited practice that took place before 2009. For the most part, the parties have referred to practice after 2009, which, for the reasons previously explained, is irrelevant to the determination of the maritime boundary. The court notes Kenya's argument that the conduct of the parties, including with respect to oil concessions, reflects the existence of a de facto maritime boundary. Even assuming that the limited evidence of practice before 2009 could be taken to suggest that a de facto line along the parallel of latitude may have been used by the parties for the location of oil concession blocks, at least for some time, the court observes that this may have been simply the manifestation of caution exercised by the parties in granting their concessions. The court also recalls that a de facto line might in certain circumstances correspond to the existence of an agreed legal boundary or might be more in the nature of a provisional line or of a line for a specific limited purpose, such as sharing a scarce resource. The court considers that proof of the existence of a maritime boundary requires more than the demonstration of longstanding oil practice or adjoining oil concessions. For these reasons, the court considers that other conduct of the parties between 1979 and 2014 does not confirm that Somalia has clearly and consistently accepted a maritime boundary at the parallel of latitude. In conclusion, the court finds that there is no compelling evidence that Somalia has acquiesced to the maritime boundary claimed by Kenya and that consequently there is no agreed maritime boundary between the parties at the parallel of latitude. 